Mr Speaker. I call James Shaw. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Well, uh, it is a delight to stand in support of the Wellington Town Belt Bill, uh, and I'd, I would just like to start by uh, commenting on some of the previous things that I've heard so far in the second reading debate. Uh, one can usually rely on uh, Paul Foster Bell to politicise what is usually a, uh, a completely non-political uh, and non-controversial bill, um, but then it is generally Paul's self-bestowed role uh, to defend indefensible causes and uh, in so doing on this occasion, of course, uh, preserving the ability of the government to knock a seven-lane highway through the town belt, uh, which of course they have managed to do. Uh, in referring to Alistair, I'm, I'm presuming he's referring to his colleague Alistair Scott, uh, a Wellington Central resident and the MP for Wairarapa and a keen follower of National Party orthodoxy along with Mr Foster Bell himself. So, um, so, Mr. Uh, Speaker, I, um, I, I, the Green Party does support this bill. Uh, I will refer to some of the clauses that have been referred to uh, by previous speakers as well, particularly Clause uh, 23. But I do, I'd like to start by uh, just acknowledging the effort that has gone into shepherding this bill through, particularly on behalf of the Member of Parliament for Wellington Central, Grant Robertson. Uh, who, as has been mentioned, has done a sterling job of this over a number of years. Um, the, this bill has been in development in its current form uh, since 2010. Uh, and, uh, you know, as was mentioned previously, uh, Mr Robertson did uh, start work uh, on this in 2008, but he has actually told me a story in which he first met some of the key stakeholders and, shall I say, uh, <coughs> objectors uh, to this as far back as 2001, uh, well before um, he became a member of parliament, uh, when uh, the, um, the, the seat for Wellington Central was merely a glint in his eye. Um, and so uh, this, this, I think, has been a bill that has, you know, has had a very long gestation period. Uh, and I do want to acknowledge uh, Mr Robertson for uh, his leadership on this. I'd also like to acknowledge the efforts uh, of the Wellington City Council uh, and the many people who uh, ha around the Wellington City Council uh, have been part of the process to this point. I'd like to acknowledge that this bill actually came to the House complete and having already received 250 submissions. So before the bill even got to its first reading, 250 people had, uh, had submitted on it. It had been through a full process. Um, it was uh, beautifully drafted. Uh, it had already passed Parliamentary Council, uh, and I would have thought, actually, at that point, it was pretty much ready to, uh, ready to pass through virtually all stages of the House. Um, but, of course, we know that the, uh, the government did object to the idea that it might provide a barrier to their ability to complete their Roads of National Significance program, um, particularly uh, to th their, their intention of putting a, um, a, up to a seven lanes of motorway on the high tai tai side of uh, the Mount Victoria Tunnel, uh, and, and that they weren't going to allow that to happen. Uh, and so that is where... Uh, the changes to the bill that have been made subsequent to its initial drafting uh, have, have come from. And there I'm referring, of course, to Clause 23, the application of the Public Works Act. Um, as the bill uh, is not in my name, um, I may have a little more latitude uh, to speak around uh, Clause 23, uh, Mr Speaker. So one of the things uh, that Mr uh, Robertson mentioned is that it removed the, um, th uh, the clause that said that Wellingtonians were interested persons uh, in, in, in this bill. And as a number of uh, speakers have already mentioned, Wellingtonians are actually very interested persons uh, in their town belt. Uh, and so it is a great shame that that clause has been changed uh, the way that it has, uh, and that Wellingtonians do not have the rights to act as interested persons under the, uh, under the law that they, that they did have in the initial draft of the bill. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the, the main objection really from the government side here, um, which had to be accounted for in order to get the bill passed at all, was the ability to uh, apply the Public Works Act so that they could complete the Roads of National Significance uh, program through to the airport. Uh, and um, I, I do think that we did manage to uh, shift that because 
uh, at least a wee bit, so that it wasn't just about um, and a reference to specific roads, because making a law uh, which is supposed to last for you know perhaps another hundred uh, years or longer to apply with you know a, a single project in mind is actually quite bad law. Uh, and so, even though there was that objection, the change in that clause, and I feel it actually still made it through the select committee process um, and improved uh, with that in mind. Um, I do also want to acknowledge that there were a number of submitters, uh, and it actually have been people all the way through this process who have been concerned about uh, whether this bill undermines um, the town belt in terms of its reserve status. I want to say that I and the Green Party are also satisfied um, based on the best advice that we received, and, and, and there was very high quality and a lot of uh, advice received, that not only does it not weaken the status of the town belt, um, it actually does enhance it. Um, so the Green Party does support the bill, uh, despite our reservations around the changes to Clause 23. Um, it is a great thing that what has been a multiplicity of uh, law um, it gets cleaned up and that the governance, the future governance arrangements uh, have been uh, dealt with um, and its legal status is much clearer now, uh, or once, once the bill passes and becomes law, uh, that it will be a lot clearer. Also very pleased to note that this actually does increase the size of the town belt. Uh, and so it does restore to some extent the original vision. And one of the most fascinating parts of the process for me as, as we've been examining the bill was looking at the original maps uh, of the original Town Belt Reservation. Uh, and and if, if only we had managed to preserve that original uh, intention, it would be even more a glorious space uh, for Wellington, even more of, a, of an actual belt. You can actually see it as a belt uh, when you see those original maps and, and, and get some idea of the vision of the people who originally uh, put this together. Uh, and the third thing that I would like to say about it, and a number of other Green Party uh, members have spoken on this bill previously, have mentioned that this bill does recognise mana whenua and does provide a pathway uh, to uh, re recognition of uh, the original um, uh, rights and ownership uh, of, of Māori here uh, in, in the Wellington region. And we think that that is a, um, uh, you know, goes some way towards the sort of, you know, post-colonial uh, uh, nature, because of course the original town belt was a, was a deeply colonial um, construct. So, so this does um, move us forward into the future, uh, and, um, and we're really satisfied with that. So, um, Mr. Speaker, as a Wellingtonian, uh, as someone who has lived inside the town belt in the times that I've lived in Wellington as I was growing up, in, in houses in the town belt, not on uh, leased uh, or um, uh, land and so on, <clears throat> but within, shall I say, within the confines of the town belt that I grew up uh, here and have explored it many times uh, as, I grew, as I grew up. Um, it is a real source of pride to me that uh, we are now moving this bill through the House. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.